Welcome everyone to my new tutorial video presentation on the stop loss limit scramble here from Emotionless Crypto Trading, taking care about your skills and knowledge. So we're looking forward executing a stop loss, but we must understand the differences between the stop loss and the stop loss limit. As well, in order to execute a stop loss, you need to have that specific asset that you would like to close the order. When we talk about a loss, you need to stop the loss of something. So you need to have that before you can execute an order. Simply, I got myself BTCs right here and better USDT in order to share with you with a tutorial. And I'm going to share with you the explanation between the differences. What is a stop loss? What is a stop loss limit? Well, there's a big difference because the stop loss is using the market price. The stop loss limit is not using the market price. It is using the price you decide. Just like a limit order, which stands for the stop loss limit, and a market order, which stands for the simple stop loss. A market order takes the price that is existing in the order book, just like a stop loss. Simply, it asks you, where do you want to be triggered? Let's say I have BTC right now, and I bought it at 37,000, as you can see right now exactly where is the price, that's where I got it, uh, you know, simple. I want to sell my BTCs if the price is going to 35 because I cannot uh, accept a loss that would be bigger than that. 35 grand for the BTC will be the trigger price that I'm going to put. I want to make sure I put a selling button here, stop loss as well, 35 grand. It will tell me that the distance from the current price to the triggering price is 5.58%. As well, it will tell me that I will basically receive a total of $9.43. I actually paid for that quantity of BTCs $10. So I will basically have that distance out there as a loss. Now, when I hit sell BTC USDT at that specific uh, price, it will go into my uh, conditional orders. And it sits there in my conditional orders until the trigger price is going to be uh, touched, right? The trigger price is right there. Once that is touched, my order is going to be automatically filled up at the best price from the order book of someone looking to buy. And the exchange pairs me up with that person looking to buy. If I have enough quantity out there, um, and if the person has enough quantity, we are going to get the whole picture completed. This is what a stop loss is. Very simple, very straightforward, and a type of order that is safe 100% in terms of execution because it depends on the order book and not on the limit order you might set up, which might not get filled. And I'd like to explain you right now with the difference with the stop limit Stop loss limit is not only asking you the triggering price like the simple stop loss, but it also asks you the limit price. So I want to sell my position. I'm going to close this one, basically the stop loss, because I want to have my stop loss limit added right there as a conditional order. So my triggering will be the same 35 grand, but I don't want to close it at 35 grand. What do I want is I want basically a limit order to be added. This is what it does, the stop loss limit. It adds a limit order in the order book. I want to get it, you know, I want to close this thing at 34,950s, right? So I'm going to, you know, make sure that this is going to be a complete position and I will hit the sell. Why do I do this and not go with the stop loss normally? Because I want to pay less fees and there's differences between the stop loss and the stop loss limit. The stop loss is more expensive. The stop loss limit is cheaper because it uses the limit order. Meanwhile, it uses the market order. And I'm sure that makes sense to you. When you do a market order, you are hundred percent. Your position is going to be filled because it takes the order from the market, from the order book. When you do a limit order, the market needs to go in your position in order to be filled up, right? So you can basically check out how it looks like. 35 grand, it's going to be executed, triggered. What does it mean trigger? It means that my limit of 34,950 that I set up will go in the order book. And the price needs to go down from 35 grand when it has been triggered into 34,950. What if it stops at 34,980 and goes back up to, let's say, 
you know, $39,000. What if it stops there and goes back up? I'm not going to get simply, in other words, said my order completed. It will sit right there just like it didn't happen anything because the price section didn't fall onto my price that I selected on the red limit, right? So then it's not going to get completed. And this is big trouble. What about other things such as a market crash? A market crash is where the big problem appears with the stop limit compared with the stop market. Because if you set a trigger price that's 35 grand, and then you set a limit price here of 34,980 or 995, well, let's say put it on 990s, just $10 between the trigger and the limit. The exchange might not have the time to put your limit order after it has been triggered at 35 grand when there is a flash crash. When BTC dumps, 500 bucks or a hundred dollars in two seconds there's no room basically for the exchange to add your position on the order book and the price will go past beyond that your 34,990s so in that case scenario your order will remain right there and we will not get filled up the price is going to be below and the market could fall lower and lower and you wake up to your chart and you will see that it's not 34,990s, it's 31, and you're going to lose a lot more. And most of the time, when there is a situation like that, people lose a lot more than the differences between the fees of a stop loss and a stop loss limit, which means a market order and a limit order. Make sure to check out my other tutorial videos. Make sure to check out the videos where I talk about the fees and explain them. But this is the logic and the idea behind these things, guys. Which is why I'm trying to cover the whole picture and explain you from multiple standpoints possible. I'm not trying to lose the time here and just bother around with general things. No, you need to know what are you doing. And most of the time, like 99.9% .9 of the time, even myself as a trader, I've been trading since 2014 full time. So I'm going with a stop loss, simple stop loss. And that's it because I care about the safety at that time and I cannot afford having a market crash or a strong dip or a you know huge movement and having my limit order missed, right? I cannot afford that. Or something else you can do is you can leave a big distance between the trigger price and the limit price. Let's say 35 grand there and then 34,200 right there. And that's great, that's fine. You know, in that case scenario, you are fine with that. Simply said. No issue in that case scenario if you leave a big space between your trigger and the limit. That's it. Then it's simple. You're going to have your uh, order executed at the time it touches 34,200s and that's it. But if you play very close, you might not get it triggered and you're going to be losing. You need to know how to play this. Because when you are on the futures, on the margin, it's a little bit different, guys. You can also do stop losses when the market is going up. And it's not called a stop loss, of course, if you're in profit. And it's called take profit. Uh, but the idea is that even when the market is going up, you can be in a loss because you might have shorted the market. So this is the current context. This is the idea around the stop loss and the stop loss limit. I hope you understood the differences. For those of you that would like to become traders and do this properly, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program directly with me where you intensively learn live from A to Z how to trade, become a trader and do this professionally. Make sure to reach out to me, register now for more details and qualify for a free conversation with me where I would like to share you more details if you think you're serious about this business and it's worth your time. Invest in your education, skills and knowledge that will generate performance and making sure that you're not one of those guys uh, which I've been coaching more than 300 uh, and majority of them have lost money on the markets first before touching any form of education. Trading is not easy. Trading is hard and it pays a lot. So as soon as you learn how to do it, you know, there's no words explaining how great it is. You can check out more videos on my channel on the topic. Have a good time. We'll talk to you soon.